hey, uh, my name is Aroop, uh, and I'm a software engineer uh, at Sierra. And I'm today really excited to talk about uh, observability and analytics, how you know, traditionally we have thought about it as two distinct things. Um, but at the end, it's just all data, and we just need way to access that data. Uh, in my talk, uh, first I'll talk a little bit about what we do at Sierra, and then we'll go through uh, how we try to you know, reimagine observability and analytics. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, what do you do at Sierra? Uh, so we are uh, a customer care AI agent building company, um, both voice and chat. Um, and if you look at uh, how different technology has emerged over time, it has always led to new experiences. Um, in the 90s, 2000s, uh, we had internet came in play, and it really changed how users interact with businesses. Uh, uh, we always, every business has a website that users should go, interact, do transactions, like order things. Uh, and in the 2010s, uh, we have mobiles uh, and mobile apps for every business. And that's how, you know, like most of us uh, use, uh, interact, interact with businesses. You know, we'll order things, uh, learn about businesses. And um, in this new world, uh, we do have AI agent capabilities. And we really believe that uh, every business would soon have an agent uh, where users would interact with. And that's the place for businesses to uh, portray what their brand is, uh, make the interactions better so that you know, like people uh, are able to do whatever they do uh, with the business uh, quicker and much more efficient way. Um, uh, these are a few of the companies that use uh, Sierra today. Um, both for voice and a chat customer care agents. Uh, for Clear, a uh, uh, lot of our, their users would use the AI agent to get their uh, travel questions answered or to have uh, the subscription extra managed. Um, uh, ADT uh, is a security company and often users would come to troubleshoot their alarms uh, or often you know, uh, fix their billing challenges. Um, uh, and Sonus is one of our very early customers, uh, and uh, 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 they have a metric they call uh, time to music, uh, and uh, often users would come to the AI agent to help troubleshoot device setup issues if they have any Wi-Fi issues, and uh, we help them uh, reduce this metric that they really care about. And it's, this is a bit how we think about uh, AI agents. So though we are focusing on uh, customer care AI agents now, we do believe that uh, uh, we are building a platform uh, that enables building any agent. Um, and the way we imagine it is that uh, the lowest layer is the agent SDK. Uh, that's where um, developers of any skill set, they can actually um, uh, declaratively man, uh, declare how, what are the goals of the agent, and they are able to set the right policy and guardrails so that agent behaves the way they want it to behave, and it does represent the brand uh, and tone of the company. Um, then we have the agent studio, uh, where uh, uh, folks from customer experience team uh, our operations team can do the same. They can define the goal uh, as well as guardrails and policies for their agent. Um, uh, and they can do that in English, uh, in plain language. So uh, overall, we do offer uh, customers to basically choose and mix and match whether they want to programmatically define what they want the agent to do or uh, if they want to explain that in English. Um, and on the top layer is agent command center, and that's where ClickHouse come into play. Um, uh, agents are very uh, interesting because all the customer interaction actually captures where users are having trouble, and that could actually often lead to how a company should think about the roadmap because that's the point. You exactly know where the frictions are, what people want from the product. Uh, so. Uh, the command center actually helps uh, our customers to learn how the agents are performing various business insight and also experimentation um, they do, um, and we use ClickHouse for that. Uh, yeah, so with that, uh, now I'll switch the gear a little bit and um, uh, talk about uh, like you know how we think observability and analytics being the same thing, uh, same data problem. Um, 
Uh, so at Sierra, we do outcome-based pricing. Uh, what we mean by that is that um, we care that whenever a user comes and interacts with the uh, customer care agent, uh, we charge the customer only if the issue is resolved. Uh, if it does not get resolved and gets escalated to uh, human agent, then we charge our customers. So that way, both the company and we are incentivized to improve the agent performance over time. Uh, so uh, containment metric is a very important metric that tells how many conversations we're able to resolve and contain versus being escalated. Um, uh, and let's take an example uh, of a retail customer uh, where you know someone might come to the AI agent and they, uh, they may say that you know this shoe I bought uh, doesn't fit me anymore and I, I want to return it. Um, and of course, the agent would make sure that and ask when you do buy it, as long as it's within policy, let's say it's within 30 days and it's not been worn, uh, it's, uh, it, it would be, you know, like it qualifies for a return. And um, the agent actually would initiate a return transaction. It would call the customer, customer's API to initiate the return and it might send an email to the customer with shipping label. Um, and, uh, but at times, the customer API could be down, unavailable. We might retry it for a few times, uh, but you know, like after a few retries, uh, if it's down, we can't uh, complete the transaction. And the policy of the agent might dictate that in such cases, we should escalate that to actual human agent. Um, uh, so on the left side, uh, we kind of, it's a very uh, specific system error, right? Like we are trying to make an HTTP call and it failed. So we kind of treat that in the land of observability, uh, that it is a system error, HTTP error, uh, but it directly impacts uh, a business metric that we kind of think of real-time analytics, which for, in this example, let's say containment metric, if uh, system met the system is unavailable, our usual system metric does impact uh, business metric. Um, uh, and uh, traditionally, I do feel that uh, we think of observability and real-time analytics you know, uh, as two different stack, and we also have different concepts how we you know, uh, uh, think about them. Uh, on the observability side of things, usually software engineers, uh, SREs, DevOps, we are looking at alert, uh, configuration, error rate, et cetera, or if you are infrastructure engineer, you may be interested in seeing, oh, did the deploy go through fine? Or we need to do capacity planning. Um, and from security lens, you might be you know, uh, wanting to know, like, is there any security incident that we need to look at? Uh, and on the data and analytics stack, uh, we usually, uh, product managers, product uh, people from product rules, uh, they are interested in seeing, oh, is my feature adoption as we expected? Um, we want to do experiments, see results, um, or if a data analyst or ML practitioners, then we are, you know, like we might want to do segment analysis, or we might want to run ML model strain, or leadership usually is looking at top level business metrics uh, and forecast. Um, in, in that world, uh, I think this, this, this two different stack was a workaround because um, uh, on the Observability, if you look at things from the observability lens, we really want queries to be fast because we want to evaluate every minute if errors are above threshold. So query latency of milliseconds in seconds is desirable. Ingestion lag is very important. We want to know if it error happened in last minute and not, we don't want to know if it happened like 10 minutes ago. Um, and uh, traditionally, uh, this performance uh, desire has led to, you know, uh, being scared of emitting metrics that might have uh, high cardinality dimensions because it might impact the performance. And we often, uh, if you look at things from observability stack, often you might emit drop useful context just because we're worried about performance. Um, uh, so yeah, the observability stack always is optimized for uh, performance and real timeness, and the data or analytics stack is optimized for each analysis. We kind of like this two stack has been different, not out of desire, but just that 
uh, the technical limitation at that point led to development of like you know custom time series databases and the data and analytics stack kind of evolved uh, uh, in a different part. But yeah, like as we are seeing, like you know, we have the observability tracked with and real time tracked with a both powered by analytics. Uh, I think uh, a lot of those old limits are going. We are hearing a lot of companies using ClickHouse for analytics and. Uh, yeah, like uh, we don't have those technical constraints we had earlier uh, in this new world. Uh, ClickHouse does enable, you know, really fast queries. There is columnar stores, in-memory, vectorized execution, uh, materialized view, indexes, all of those techniques actually lets us run really, really fast queries at scale. Um, and also, uh, it has amazing real-time ingestion, uh, right? It has good integration with Kafka, Kinesis, or any pop sub you can name as well as ingestion from S3. Um, and and uh, yeah, we don't fear about cardinality anymore. Like, of course, we have to shape our data for the query performance, but there's so many tricks to do that. We can do materialized view pre-aggregation. If you skip a high cardinality column uh, in a query, uh, we don't have to worry about performance. So we can basically have all the data in one place uh, and, and have, uh, have it you know, answer all our questions. Um, and uh, it would be really, really nice where, you know, like it's just one language SQL to interact with any kind of data. Um, so with that premise, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we kind of use that at Sierra. This is just a sample query, uh, but uh, at Sierra, we do capture structured events uh, for any chat conversation that is going on, be it voice or text chat conversation. Uh, I'm just calling it a table prod dot chat events and that's what powers our analytics product that our users see um, and uh, uh, yeah clickhouse's uh, materialized view actually lets us aggregate that uh, in real time and we actually can uh, power alerts out of that too um, and and we use this materialized view to aggregate every minute uh, the metric name and the value and dimensions we care about doing alerting. Um, and um, so this is how alerting works. Uh, so we actually use ClickHouse's uh, web API endpoint where you can, you can configure a query that leads the, and, and a web API endpoint. And whenever you hit that API, uh, it will actually return the result of the pre-configured query. And ClickHouse supports Prometheus wire format. So, um, uh, uh, actually, like we can have Prometheus point to ClickHouse web endpoint. It will scrape the metrics every minute or so. Uh, and we do use Prometheus uh, for alerting. Uh, so Prometheus would do the alert evaluation, scheduling, uh, as well as alert delivery. Uh, so you know, we would have our um, uh, it alert our customers. Um, um, we are still early in this journey. We still have ways to go because we want our customers who are looking at our analytics dashboard to be able to actually go and click configure alert uh, on business metrics they are interested in. So uh, hooking that up is uh, we still have some work to do. Um, uh, and also, I think there's still a bit of plumbing needed to happen to make it work end to end. I'm kind of like look at looking at the ClickHouse community. Uh, if you know we can make this even better, uh, that you know alerting etc. If it becomes part of uh, native ClickHouse, probably it would open up us to look at observability and analysis as being even uh, same the two sides of the same coin. Um, um, yeah, so uh, uh, with that, a uh, closing thought is that um, everything is just an event. Um, and uh, if you look at how the data ecosystem has evolved, uh, uh, like we have open table format and we have various compute engines, be it Trino, Spark, Snowflake, pointing to Iceberg. and and we can pick the compute engine that matches our performance characteristic we, we care about. And um, so I think I kind of see the world where, you know, like our traditional observability, observability data and traditional business or analytics data are all coexisting. And it's very really easy for us to see the relationship, me being, you know, very back in a data platform engineer, 
I could probably still see how the performance of the things I'm building impacts the business performance. Uh, and all of this in one place, I think, helps correlate how one impacts another. And at Syria also, we are definitely seeing that, um, that uh, even product managers talk in system metrics, like, oh, they know like HTTP error could lead to containment going down and vice versa. Like we being the platform engineers, we know like, oh, anything we do, if you improve something, how it impacts the business. And I think the key is um, in, in the, uh, the data living together and ClickHouse is amazing that, you know, can uh, match both use cases. Um, yeah, uh, also I think uh, there is a bit of cultural shift too. Uh, Though ClickHouse powers both, I think we often think of this as two different distinct things. So I think like uh, it would be really cool when we don't think of you know observability and analytics or data stack being two different uh, islands, but they are just data problem powered by really good compute engine like ClickHouse. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you.